My dad chose my sister's cat over my wedding. Now I'm cutting him off for good. So I, 26, female, I'm getting married this week. There are just five days to go for the wedding, and I'm caught up in so much drama already, and it's all thanks to my sister and my dad, so that's great for context. My dad has been a single father for the past 10 years since my mother passed away after a long, drawn-out battle with the Big C when I was 16. It was incredibly difficult for us, but more so for me because back then I realized that now nobody was in my corner and my sister would get to lord over me all she wanted to. My mother has treated both of us equally, but my dad definitely had a soft spot for my sister. And after my mom passed away, she would get away with everything that she did. But it was not that easy for me. My sister Katie is two years older than me and ten times more annoying and entitled than anyone I know. It she would literally treat me like her personal servant when I was younger and every time that I protested, my dad would ask me to do what she wanted to do, because apparently she was too fragile to do things for herself. And that was just an act. I knew that. But my dad believed her and it always helped that she had been a sickly child when she was younger. But as she grew up, she grew out of that. However, she still liked to pretend that she was chronically recovering from colds or several other common illnesses at any given point just to get out of doing her chores so that I would end up doing all the work around the house. Then she would just laze around in her room doing nothing. I used to find it incredibly annoying, but if I didn't do it, nobody else would do it because my dad would always be too tired after coming back home from work, and I did not want to bother him. Anyway, after I turned 18 and moved out for college, things started getting better for me because I didn't have to live with her anymore. We did not have any contact after college since I didn't like her and we never really got along. Not only did she make me do all the work, but she was also not very nice to be around. She would constantly take pot shots at me and try to rile me up and just be generally annoying, so I was pretty glad to be out of the house. I miss my dad for sure, but then I wasn't going to sacrifice my sanity to live with my family. And I know a lot of people are going to find it weird that I used to actually get along with my dad in spite of the fact that he was blatantly biased towards my sister, but I can't help it. We had a nice relationship and it used to be that way until recently. It wasn't like I was a doormat for him. I would always protest and stand up for myself when he would be too much to deal with and got into our fair share of fights over the years because of how biased he was towards Katie. But then at the end of the day, he was still my father and I would make up with him eventually. I met my fiancé Andy in college and after dating for almost eight years, we finally decided to get married this year. We are in pretty good places in our respective careers and it just felt like the right time. I can't say the same for my sister though, since Katie has been doing pretty badly of late and has gone back to living with my dad. After she graduated, she had been living by herself for a couple of years, but then last year she decided to quit her job to join her friend in their jewelry business. Unfortunately, it didn't exactly do well. They had done absolutely no research and neither would they adequately prepare and just jumped into it without thinking much. So naturally, it was doomed right from the beginning. Not only did they burn through all the investment money that they had mostly raised from family and friends, but they were not even able to get any substantial amount out of the business. It, she had already quit her job and after her business flopped, she had to shut it down and since then, she has been unemployed. It's been almost six months and she hasn't even bothered to start looking for another job. So she's completely reliant on my dad. He was planning on retiring in a couple of years, but now I don't think that's feasible anymore since he is supporting her. This is just one of the things that we used to fight about recently because I think that he needs to tell her to get up and find a job because she can't just rely on her aging dad for the rest of her life and mope around because of one failed business venture. She needs to get out of there and do something about her life. But my dad says that she just needs some time to get over things and deal with this emotionally before she commits to anything else. We have very opposing views on this topic, so we try not to talk about it since it will only lead to a fight. Besides, I got engaged just a couple of weeks after she had to shut down her business and my dad thinks that that's another reason why she's so upset because even her youngest sister is doing so well in life and she can't even bring herself to get out of bed on most days. I know for a fact that she is jealous of me right now because she makes sure that she puts it out on social media and pretends that everything awful in the world is happening to her just for attention and every time somebody responds to her posts that definitely seems like a cry for help. She brings up how I am doing so great and how she deserves all of this. And not me, but apparently I got it because I'm willing to manipulate and step on people to get ahead. I obviously don't do that and I am where I am because of my hard work and efforts and she is where she is because she likes to play the victim, even though she is the one responsible for all the bad things that have been happening to her, well, except for one maybe. Three weeks ago, her cat passed away after almost 15 years. She's had that cat for a really long time and she was extremely attached to him. When that happened, she was naturally racked with grief and my dad told me that things were so bad that I started feeling bad for her. I'm not going to lie, I wanted to reach out to her and give her my condolences, but I did not want to seem fake so I just told my dad to convey my message. 
Anyway, she had already been pretty depressed, and then when her cat passed away, she refused to even eat for days and my dad would have to literally beg her to get out of bed and try to survive. It was really pathetic and I really felt bad for both of them, but I was really busy with wedding prep because there were just a couple weeks to go until the big day, so I decided not to involve myself too much with what was going on there. I kept in touch with my dad and I would comfort him whenever he would be too upset about the way Katie was behaving, but that was really the most that I could do. Anyway, I did not think that this would lead to any trouble for me, but a few days back my dad contacted me to tell me that he would not be able to walk me down the aisle on my wedding day. I had obviously assumed that it would be him doing that, but I had called him to formally ask him to walk me down the aisle the day before that phone call. I thought that he would accept it immediately, but he told me that he needed some time to think about it which was suspicious, and then he called me the next day to decline, and when I asked him why, since obviously I was perplexed, his reason just blew my mind. He told me that Katie had cremated her cat a few weeks ago, and now she wanted to go to Hawaii and scatter his ashes on the beach, because a couple of years back she and a bunch of her friends had gone on a road trip to Hawaii and she had taken her cat with her so apparently she had been memories of that place, and it was special to her, and the day of my wedding was exactly one month after her cat had passed away, so she wanted to scatter the ashes on my wedding so not only did my dad decline to walk me down the aisle but he was also telling me that he would not be able to be present at my wedding. He said he was really sorry about this and wanted to make it up to me later, but he would have to go with Katie since this was the first time in weeks that she had spoken about wanting to do something and get out of the house. She also specifically requested my dad to accompany her because she wanted somebody to be there to emotionally support her. I was extremely pissed off when he said that, but I tried to deal with things calmly and I told my dad that maybe a friend of hers could accompany her or maybe she could do it at least one day after my wedding just so that he would at least be able to attend. I wanted at least one parent to be present at my wedding, but my dad said that she was pretty firm about what she had said and he made the same suggestions himself as well, because he wanted to be able to attend my wedding as well, but when he tried to suggest anything else she got really upset and started accusing him of not caring about her feelings. Apparently according to her on my wedding day I would have loads of people around me who cared about me, but she only had my father and she thinks that she should be the priority right now, since she's going through a really difficult phase in her life. When my dad said that he also believes that given her situation she should be the priority at the moment I completely lost my mind and I told him that she has been his priority all his life so I'm not surprised that he is ditching me on my wedding day just to be with her. I didn't even give him a chance to say anything else and just hung up and blocked him everywhere. I was very upset and when I told Andy about it he seemed to understand where I was coming from. I cried a lot for the next two days but then I decided to get back at my father and do something that I knew would piss him off. Since I knew that my sister was playing mind games with me and trying to piss me off the right things to do would be to do something that I knew would piss him off. So instead of crying about it, I decided to ask my uncle to walk me down the aisle. My uncle is my dad's twin brother, and they absolutely loathe each other. I've known that ever since I was a kid and I've seen firsthand how nasty they can get when they're around each other. Whenever they would meet each other at family events and stuff, they would constantly try to one-up each other and it would make it awkward for everybody else around them. My grandparents tried really hard to get them to stop, but they just hated each other so much. It was very difficult to control them. Eventually they grew out of it, and after my mom passed away my dad stopped attending any event where he knew that my uncle would be present. I personally did not have anything against my uncle and I could honestly sympathize with him because I knew what it felt like to have a sibling who you hated. But we did not have a particularly close relationship either. Anyway, after that conversation with my dad I was so pissed off that I decided to go out of my way to contact my uncle and ask him to walk me down the aisle. He was pretty surprised when I did that and said that he didn't know what to say because he didn't think that we were close enough for that. But I told him that this was to make my dad upset because of what he had done. After that I did not need to do any more convincing. He was pretty much on board as soon as he heard that this is going to piss my dad off. My uncle actually started laughing when I asked him if he wanted to be a part of this even though they were in their 50s. He told me that he would still never pass up an opportunity to embarrass his brother. Amen to that. Anyway, we agreed that we were going to make a post about it, and that would definitely reach my father. So that very evening I posted about how I was so grateful to my uncle for agreeing to walk me down the aisle and within hours I received a phone call from my father. I had unblocked him for that purpose, and as soon as he reached out to me he told me that he was very upset that I had even considered talking to my uncle and was replacing him with that guy of all people. He told me that he would convince Katie to delay the scattering of the ashes but now all I had to do was agree to let him walk me down the aisle because it would be very embarrassing and insulting for him to have my uncle walk me down when he was still well and alive. I told him that he had a chance and he blew it over Katie and now I was giving him a taste of his own medicine. He got really upset and said that I was being petty and immature and I agreed. 
I am indeed being petty and immature, but that just seemed to upset him even more, and by the end of the phone call he was in tears, and said that he had never expected me to act like this, just because he was trying to be there for my depressed sister, who had it a lot harder than I did right now. He said that I had absolutely no empathy, and was being pure evil, because my sister had literally lost everything, and I couldn't even let her have my dad for one day, and now I feel like what I did was kind of insensitive, because he was right about my sister having lost everything, so I need you guys to tell me if I need to apologize to my dad or not. So Ada I asked my uncle to walk me down the aisle after my dad declined because my sister wanted him to accompany her to Hawaii on my wedding day. Update one two days to go for the wedding, and you know what I'm just going to walk down the aisle by myself instead of putting myself through all of this hassle. I think it's more appropriate for me to just walk the aisle on my own since in the long run I have realized that I'm going to be on my own. I spoke to my uncle and since we already got the reaction we wanted from my dad he said he was fine with it. He's just going to be a guest now, like he was supposed to be earlier. He did not mind it anyway, since he had been skeptical about walking me down initially, too. I also spoke to my father, but I did not speak to him on a phone call because that would lead to another confrontational conversation. So I just left him a message and said that if he wanted to attend the wedding, he was free to do so, but he did not need to walk me down the aisle. I also told him that if he did not want to attend the wedding and wanted to go to Hawaii with Katie, he was free to do that as well. But then I was sorry to say that I would have to cut him off for the rest of my life because he has had enough chances to prove to me that he is going to treat me like a priority when it really comes down to it, but has failed to do that every single time. And now I just don't want to tolerate this kind of disrespect anymore. I want to get married and I want to be happy when I'm getting married. I have worried enough about what he's going to think about how other people are going to feel about my decisions and it's been a colossal waste of my time since he has never bothered to care about how I would feel about certain things. If he had, he never would have dropped the bomb on me with just a couple of days to go for my wedding. And if he cared, he would have apologized to me after I sent that message to him, but he hasn't even bothered to reply to me. I've spoken to Andy as well about this, and he thinks it's the right call to make sense. There were just a few days to go for the wedding, and we still haven't been able to sort things out with my father yet. At this point, I don't even think I have any other option. Update 2. Hey, so first things first. I got married yesterday. I still can't believe it. I'm actually married now, and along with the engagement ring on my finger, I also have the wedding band. And it's surreal, and I'm so happy right now, so I hate to have to think about my dad and my sister, but I owe you guys an update, and a detailed one, at that since I kind of just ranted and left in the last one. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, my father did not attend the wedding. Yet, from what I know, he decided to attend the scattering of the ashes of my sister's dead cat in Hawaii with her, which is a normal thing to choose over your other daughter's wedding. Anyway, I don't even want to get into that since some people gave me a lot of hate for acting like I was not taking my sister's depression seriously. Look, I really feel bad for her and that's something I'm going to stand by. Depression is a terrible thing and I wouldn't even wish it on my worst enemy which ironically happens to be Katie. Anyway, it was not depression that led her to do this. It was her severe and crippling need to go against me and be the center of attention at all times that made her choose to scatter her cat's ashes in Hawaii on the day that I was supposed to get married. She could have really waited for a couple of days and then done that, or maybe she could have done that earlier but she just had to do it the day of my wedding. I think it's not a coincidence, and she has always had something against me, so I refuse to believe that this is just her being depressed and acting out of it. Either way, depression is just an explanation but it's not an excuse. So yeah, I'm not making fun of her but I also refuse to let her off easy just because she's struggling and coming to my dad that's just another story altogether. I don't even know what to say about him, except that he has let me down for the umpteenth time and this time I'm not going to forgive him. It's going to be difficult going through life without any parents at all in my corner, but let's be real, he has never been in my corner anyway. For him, life has always been about Katie and I can see that crystal clear now. I was a fool to believe that things could ever change. He chose not to attend my wedding and he was very clever about it. He did not let me know until after the ceremony, so until then I was still very confused as to whether he would be attending or not. Since I had left him a message earlier but he did not reply to that I just kept checking my phone, but then after I had walked down the aisle and everything was done I realized that he would not be showing up and it was then that he chose to text me, saying that he was in Hawaii with Katie, and he had decided to attend the scattering of the ashes because Katie needed him more than I did. She was more emotionally dependent on him and he said that he was sorry but he hoped that I would understand. I still would have found that message meaningful if he hadn't chosen to say that my petty and immature behavior earlier with my uncle and stuff had also really put him off and he thought that it was best for us to stay apart for a while now, and that was another reason why he was not attending. I'm not going to deny the fact that it was petty but honestly the only reason I did that was because I always felt ignored after my mom passed away and I'm not going to bother to pretend that what I did was not immature, but what else could I have done? I just wanted to do something to piss him off because I wanted to know that he actually cared and maybe he did but clearly not enough to show up for me. 
Anyway, the message really annoyed me, and it was the day of my wedding so I wanted to be happy, so I just blocked him and moved on with my day. Also, he had already chosen not to come to the wedding so sending a message to tell me that he was not attending was pretty redundant. People did ask about them about why my father and my sister were absent from the wedding, and I chose to be completely honest with them and told them the real reason. I figured that this reflected poorly on them and not on me so I had no reason to hide anything. Most people were just speechless and others found it quite hilarious but in a pretty sad way. Anyway, I think pretty much the entire family knows now that my dad skipped my wedding to go to Hawaii with Katie to scatter the ashes of her cat. He couldn't even spare one single day for me, and that is his biggest failure as a father I think, but I still had a pretty fun time and nothing can change that. My wedding day is still going to be the best day of my life so far. I know I get to spend the rest of my life with the man I love the most and I've made up my mind that he's going to be my only family from now onwards. Update 3 Hey so it's been a week since my wedding. It still feels great to say that. Anyway, Andy and I are supposed to go on our honeymoon in a couple of days, but obviously my dad and Katie just cannot stand to see me happy, so they decided that this is the perfect time to confront me about what I had been telling people at the wedding about why they were not present there. Three days back, Katie texted me. I haven't blocked her. I had just blocked my father, but after reading her text, I felt like blocking her as well because it was just so annoying that she felt like she had higher moral ground here. And just for the record, the only reason I haven't blocked her yet is because in case something happens to my father, I want to be able to know about it, and I know that in spite of our differences, I'm sure that she is still going to inform me in case of an accident or illness or whatever. Anyway, that's literally the only reason why I have still given her access to me. I know that most people would advise me to go no contact, but I don't think it's possible for me, because just because my dad has been a terrible father to me does not necessarily mean I have to also be a terrible daughter to him. This might not make sense to a lot of people, but these are my morals and I'm going to stick to it. So I would appreciate it if people did not comment on this. Now coming to the message that she had sent me. She said, hey, we just came back from Hawaii and we have already been contacted by many of our relatives and they think that we were wrong for choosing the day of your wedding to scatter my cat's ashes. I'm not surprised that you chose to tell everybody this story and portray us in a negative way, but I'm just disappointed that you are still picking on me, even though you know you know that I'm going through a very difficult time in my life. I really wish that you hadn't talked crap about me and dad, because we are family and you of all people should understand that it's very difficult to lose a loved one. I really hope that you would have had more compassion for me, but anyway, that's obviously not the case. Dad has also noticed that you have blocked him and he's very upset about that so I think you should undo that and honestly all I have to say is that you need to be a little more thoughtful towards us. You can't just go through life thinking about nobody apart from yourself and expect people to be okay with that. I hope you understand what I'm getting at and apologize and even if you don't, I'm not going to be surprised because if you're still choosing to hate on me at this time there's very little that I can expect from you. The tone of the message itself pissed me off really bad and then the content. I don't even want to say anything about it because I might end up cursing her out here. It was so pretentious and holier than thou that I honestly wanted to just block her, but then after thinking about it for a while I decided to craft my own reply to it and sent it back to her. Hey Katie, I did tell our relatives about why you and dad were not present at the wedding. I decided to be honest about it because I'm not a liar. Also by deciding not to show up for my wedding you pretty much put yourself in that position and I think it's very unfair to expect me to cover up for you people especially given the current circumstances since both of you have been nothing but unkind to me. You guys couldn't even think about me on my wedding day and tried to put me first just for one day, so I really don't think I have anything to apologize for. If dad is upset about the fact that I blocked him, he probably should have thought things through earlier instead of regretting it now. I've already made up my mind. I don't want any contact with either of you two, so I would really appreciate it if you did not contact me after this. Unless it's an emergency, then you can text me or call me, but unless there's any urgent situation, I really wish that you would not contact me at all. I have no interest in speaking to either you or Dad. Both of you have hurt me a lot in the past few years, and I agree with what Dad said. It would be for the best if we spent some time apart for now. I'm a married woman now, and I want to spend the next couple of years trying to enjoy my life with my husband. Right now, he is the only family that I have. I wish you both all the best in your life. Goodbye. After showing it to Andy, I sent that message and she just replied to it in a couple of minutes. She said that she would respect my wishes and also added that my dad was still very upset about my decision not to speak to them, but I couldn't help that. They brought this on to themselves. I know Katie's happy that she won't have to speak to me and if my dad really is that upset, well, too bad, because like I said, this is his own fault. Anyway, I'm just going to try and enjoy my honeymoon now. We've been planning for this for a really long time and I deserve to have fun now. Next story Ada for supporting my sister after she decided not to invite our parents to her private gender reveal announcement. My 18F sister 33F is currently three months into her pregnancy. 
She was very secretive about the entire thing and didn't tell anybody in her life about it until a few weeks ago. Last week, my sister got the results for her baby's gender in the mail. She told my mother about receiving the results and how she hadn't opened it yet, and my mother began to flood her with questions about if she was going to do a gender reveal party, if she could help out with the gender reveal party, how she should come to our house to talk about the baby, etc. My sister brushed a lot of it off by saying she simply didn't know what she wanted to do yet. Well, this week, my sister added everyone in our immediate family to a WhatsApp group chat. She said nothing, just sent a video of her and her fiancé popping small party poppers as a gender reveal celebration. There was no crowd, no friends, no family, just them and a cameraman to document the entire thing. It, they had decided on doing a private gender reveal just for the two of them. My mom was absolutely livid upon seeing the video. She instantly stormed downstairs to talk see yell to my father about how my sister was a snake who didn't see the value in family, how she couldn't believe that her own daughter would betray her, like this, how she was a horrible role model to her younger siblings, etc. My dad echoed her sentiments. They are furious that my sister decided that she wanted a private moment to celebrate her pregnancy that didn't involve anybody else except herself. They called her selfish for it. They said she was going down the wrong path with this pregnancy all because she didn't want the moment to be about anybody other than herself. They sent her a very long, nasty message about how they felt about her gender reveal celebration not involving them. Now, this is where I may be the asshole, but I truly do not see the issue with any of my sister's actions. She has had a pretty tough relationship with my parents in recent years due to them wanting to exert a lot of control over her when she was well into her 20s, and her relationship with our mother is extra strained because she feels our mother is a very self-centered, egotistical, egotistical, a manipulative woman that can't handle criticism well. I can completely understand why my sister feels the way she does and why she wanted a private gender reveal party. I sympathize with her wanting to keep it between her and her fiancé, and I let her know that. I'm super lost on how to feel about everything, I don't want my sister to feel like everyone in our family is against her because of how harsh my family is being, but at the same time, I'm still young and don't know everything. I don't know if my parents are justified in feeling the way they do, but I don't think it's wrong for my sister to want to go about her pregnancy privately. So, Ada? Your parents are very entitled and not at all justified in demanding your sister celebrate her pregnancy and choose to live her life how they have decided she will do it. They still have control issues, and as long as she continues to establish healthy boundaries to protect her and her child from them, they will carry on acting like spoilt demanding brats while playing the victim. A fair warning the moment you start to really realize how bad they are and they start to notice they can't control you like they have in the past, they will treat you the same. NTA. Send her some love and let her know how much you appreciate her. I've realized for a while now that my parents tend to treat their daughters differently than their sons. My sister moved out years ago, and when she did, I became the new scapegoat for all of my mother's actions. I've had a lot of conversations with my sister about how she's been treated by our parents and seen even more of it firsthand, they are very mean people. I'm doing my best to support my sister without getting directly involved because my parents are very, very scary people to me. Even as I type this response, they're discussing her right now. NTA, your mother and father are not pregnant. Your sister is pregnant. The pregnant person gets to make the decisions about their pregnancy. Given their history with your sister, they seem to be working really hard on making sure that they have no access to this upcoming grandchild. Continue being supportive of your sister. If the rest of your family chooses to support your parents in their unreasonable quest for control, they are likely to be cut out of your sister's life as well.